In this episode of Over Asking, I head out on a frozen lake Rosso in Muskoka to explore boathouses with some local building experts, fall through the ice, and get rescued by a local volunteer firefighter, and discover a secret ice cave. Stay tuned, it's all coming up next. Hello, my name is Joel Adair. And welcome to another episode of Over Asking, the show for entertaining and educating homeowners and real estate investors. This episode is about the Muskoka Boathouse. The tradition of building boathouses in Muskoka goes back to the 1800s. What started out as a garage built on the water for storing and repairing boats evolved over the past 100 years to something now that helps to complete a special, more luxury style of cottage. It can be a guest house, it can be a place for entertaining, it's ideal for swimming, sun tanning, and spending long summer days with family. My favorite activity is probably just sitting in the boathouse, having a drink, listening to the water hit the dock, and staring at the boats. As much fun and as exciting as these boathouses are in the summer months, they also have this kind of enchanting and rarely seen beauty that exists in the winter. But the winter landscape on the Muskoka Lakes can be harsh and brutally unforgiving. Out on the frozen lakes, there's dangers everywhere. Conditions are constantly changing. It can go from very wet to uh, a heavy snowfall or even a barren, almost dry, desert-like condition. This constantly changing winter environment can be extremely destructive. Ice can actually destroy docks and boathouses. Earlier this winter, I made the trip to Ballad to meet with the owner of East Portage Dock Company. His name's Kurt Munz, and he's been working and playing on these lakes most of his life. Over the past 20 years, he's built over 250 docks, many of which have provided the foundation for some incredible boathouses. Kurt has become an authority in his field when it comes to anything related to docks from construction to maintenance and safety. So I asked Kurt to explain exactly how ice forming on the lake can actually destroy a dock or a boathouse. Three main ways. The first way is when the lake ice is going up and down with the level of the lake. Yeah. All these steel docks have bracing and all sorts of Different, different items in them that aren't built or aren't engineered to withstand the weight of all that ice hanging yeah. or the uplift device. So that's the one. Second one is the actual ice expansion. In the spring when it gets sunny out, it, um, the ice starts to warm up when there's not snow on the, on the lake and with the more rainy winters that we've had, it melts all the snow, ice freezes solid, sun gets in there and starts warming up and expanding and just starts pushing into shorelines, pushing through docks, boathouses, up onto shore, all different kinds of things. That's what causes major pressure cracks and whatnot. It's the same thing that's coming in and, and pushing docks over basically. And then the third way is in the spring when you have this main iceberg in the middle of the lake and all these bubblers that are bubbling around the perimeter, it has nowhere to actually keep it in place for it to melt to where it needs to melt to. So you have this, large mass of ice floating around with the winds banging into shorelines yeah. and that unfortunately is something that bubblers do not do anything for yeah the only way we can deal with that is by allowing allowing the ice to freeze in to shore in as many areas as possible you're saying like the more connected the ice is to shore exactly the, the more the, the less it's going to move mm -hmm. and the better it is the better chance it has to to keep melting locked in its locked in its position as opposed to being free floating but still having that solid mass able to wreak havoc. As you heard Kurt explain, the best way to avoid damage is to use a bubbler. For those of you who don't know what a bubbler is, it's a small electric engine that's packed in antifreeze and uses a propeller to keep the water around the dock and the boathouse moving all winter long. That movement in the water is enough to prevent the water from freezing. The problem is if these little engines are running all winter long, they can open up entire sections of the lake that should otherwise be frozen. These unnatural openings in the lake can create all kinds of hazards for humans and animals alike. Every winter there are stories about snowmobilers, pets, wildlife, and children falling victim to the open water and the thin ice that's created by these bubblers. Kurt finally decided it was time to create a solution that would offer better protection for boathouses and docks and help create a safer environment for everyone who uses the lakes during the winter months. By controlling the flow of the water created by the bubbler, you can make the bubbler work more efficiently and decide exactly how much open water you want to surround the dock and the boathouse. To contain the flow of the water, Kurt created a durable floating skirt that goes in the water 
and surrounds the boathouse and dock. Once it's installed, it creates a hard borderline where the ice ends and the water begins. And it completely avoids opening up any unnecessary open water and creating any additional hazards on the lake. Fast forward to late March 2019, and once again, I'm meeting up with Kurt Muntz and his friend Curtis Wetters, who is also a well-known builder on Lake Joe and Lake Rosso. The plan was to head out in Lake Rosso and track down some of Kurt's bubbler buddy systems and find out how they've been performing over the course of the winter. But the day we met up, it was such a gorgeous spring day that these two local experts decided we should go do a little bit of sightseeing on the way, which included an unforgettable stop at a secret ice cave on Lake Rosso and, of course, visiting Kurt's bubbler buddy system. The Bubbler Buddy was performing exactly the way it was intended to, but we had one final stop. We were going to visit Dave Bemman, who's a local volunteer firefighter, as well as a seasoned real estate specialist who works with Cayman Marshall International Real Estate in Port Carling. Dave lives on Lake Rosso year-round and is all too familiar with the dangers of open water and the potential for rapidly changing ice conditions on the lake. Just one week prior to filming this video, Dave had actually assisted in a rescue attempt of a white-tailed deer who had fallen to a bubbler system near his home on Lake Rosso. It was sad because the deer had a massive laceration on its neck, which was caused by the sharp ice. And by the time the deer was pulled from the freezing water, it was already severely suffering from hypothermia. The police and the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry were also on the scene, but ultimately it was too late. That made me wonder if the bubbler buddy system can actually prevent an accident. And if there was an accident, would the bubbler buddy actually help save a life? To find out, I decided I would actually get in the freezing water and attempt to crawl up to safety. Please don't try this at home. This was done under strictly controlled supervision with rescue equipment on hand and local experts. Before I even got in the water, the idea of prevention really hit me hard. The bubbler buddy has a really small footprint in the ice compared to a regular bubbler system. So it just seemed like it would be less likely that something would fall into a bubbler buddy system because the hole is so much smaller. The second thing I noticed before getting in the water was the bubbler buddy dock was really clearly marked. I could see the bright orange plastic and the reflectors from across the lake that were sticking out above the ice. The regular traditional bubbler hole, I could barely see from a distance. It wasn't until I got right on top of it that I could see there was open water there. So I decided to start with the traditional bubbler system first. It was a little bit stressful. When I jumped in, my head went under. You know, I could only imagine if I wasn't wearing a wetsuit, I would be in total panic and I would never want to be in that water, especially with boots and a snowmobile suit that's soaking wet, a helmet, clinging to the ice, trying to claw my way out of that jagged ice, which I found the ice around the edge of that bubbler hole really unpredictable and it took me several tries to break through the edge of that ice till I finally reached some ice that was strong enough to support my weight. After physically getting in the water and testing both systems, I noticed the biggest difference was in the bubbler buddy system, I had something to grab onto when I was in the water. You know, this is definitely going to be a situation of panic that's stressful. It's going to be hard to think. So having something that's calming, that's sitting there in the water, floating and easy to grab onto is going to be a lifesaver. If you're trying to just crawl your way out directly back onto the ice, it's not going to make a huge difference. I think the ice on the bubble buddy system was a little stronger, but where it really became a lifesaver is when I realized this is like a giant rope connected to shore and I could just pull myself all the way to shore and use it to climb right out. So hopefully I can offer a few takeaways here. The first one, number one, Spring in Ontario, there's a lot of frozen lakes and waterways that are starting to thaw out. It's a dangerous time of year. You're best just to completely stay away from open water and frozen lakes this time of year. By late May, early June, obviously the conditions are going to change and it's going to be much more favorable and safe. Number two, if you're out shopping for a cottage this spring or this summer, remember there are four very different seasons in Ontario. The winters can be brutal in cottage country and there's uh, a lot of little details you should be discussing with a local expert real estate agent who understands the changing conditions throughout the year and can provide you with the best possible information for purchasing waterfront in cottage country. Finally, if you want some additional information on the Bubbler Buddy or anything you saw in this video, please go and check out my blog at overasking.tv. There'll be links there on everything in this video. You can check that out and get more details. If you like this video, please leave me a like Leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.